It's been a rather slow news week here in the round of Indianapolis, which is kind of strange. There's usually something to talk about here. But uh, the main story has been there are several drivers shopping around for rides for next season. Uh, Leonard Roderick made two very high profile visits, one to Volpe Racing Team and the other for Pow to Power Sing Incorporated. And uh, he's looking for a drive at one of those two teams. I have no idea which of those two teams Roderick is going to for next season, however Greg Woodard made a visit to Power Sting Incorporated later in the week, so uh, make of that what you will. Also, another story this week is that there were some teams that were opting to switch their drivers out before the start of the race, which uh, I thought was uh, shorthanding the guys that had actually qualified for the race. Melanie Cleveno's position in the field was not safe unless her teammate Chris Johans also made the field. Um, and if uh, Johans had failed to qualify the 64, then he would just take over Cleveno's car. And considering Cleveno had qualified on pole die, I think that's uh, rather shorthanding, especially when she's looking for a drive for next season. The silly season has an interesting way of bringing out the best and worst in some people. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. I will now take you through the starting grid for today's round of Indianapolis. And as usual, I will start in the back of the field and work my way towards the front. 42 cars will start today's race. And on the back row of the grid on the outside in 42nd place is Reese Bien in the Terminator making his first career Master Cup start and Terminator's first start. On his inside is Andrea Canassa in the 426 Motorsports car. They qualified and ran very well in this race last year. On the outside of row 20 is Patrick Eicholtz who is on the front row here for the Indy 500 a couple times. And on his inside is Brandon Lario in the number 24 car, the Afterburner Motorsports entry. On the outside of row 19 is Greg Woodard, marking LaCoya's one-year anniversary in the TM Master Cup Series in that beautiful Phoenix performance livery. And on his inside, Mika Pasanen, one of the car heroes of the Cariala Grand Prix. On the outside of row 18 is Japanese driver Yemi no Tenshi in car 25. And on her inside is debutante driver Archer Harris in the 79. Outside row 17 is Frank Azure in the FAC Motorsports car, another debutante driver. On his inside, in car number 7, Jose Luis Martinez of Mexico. On the outside of row 16, in car number 17, is Lewis Kingston. Uh, Kingston hoping to impress in that car. He's the only Nomoto in today's race. And on the inside of Kingston is Zach Duff in car number 5, who's going to be looking for a drive for next year because Zenos is not guaranteed for next season. The Atlantic Motorsports car of Ben Atkins is on the outside of row 15, car 56. And on his inside is Dale Roswell in the Freedom for Palestine, car 22. On the outside of row 14, is Bob Steffens in car number 70, driving for Team Thunder. And on his inside is his teammate, Anthony Griffith, in car number 77. There's a lot of people uh, wondering why he didn't get a penalty from his antics in Wisconsin. On the outside of row 13 is ASCC regular Bill Calhoun, making his first Master Cup Series start in his own car number 38. And on his inside, in car 55, Zelda Ashby, in the uh, second DeGarmo car. On the outside of row 12 in 24th place is Ali Collada making her first career Master Cup start. And on her inside, Yulina Sova, who won the Cariala Grand Prix as a rookie back in 2007. On the outside of row 11 is Davina Henton in car number 6, the second of the three Volpes in today's race. And on her inside is Marcus Leonard in car triple nine. Leonard could be buying out the Terminator design for next season. And on the outside of row 10 is Gaspar D'Souza in car number 0. He's contended for the win here a couple of times, and the defending champion of the race, Ian Cooper, starts 19th in car triple 7. On the outside of row 9 is Adrian Devereaux in car number 1. Uh, he led the points for much of the season, and Scott Bates is on the inside of row 9. Look out for this 88 car today. On the outside of row 8 is Michael Sykes in the number 44 launch car. On, on his inside, Chris Johans in the number 64 Schaefer Group Tremwell. On the outside of row 7, Luciano Savarol in car number 3, who won at Quincy earlier in the year, and Brian Sendak in car number 90 has the longest losing streak in the field. Outside of row 6 is Yuho Cavela in car number 04, one, another one of the heroes of the Cariola Grand Prix, and Alan Hodges comes out of his temporary retirement to start in the inside of row 6. Kevin Dwyer starts in the top 10. He was the slowest car in the last... Uh, last chance qualifying session, and Carla Rosinski in car 330, a shock qualifier in the second Atlantic car. The outside of row 4, Carlos Donzello in car number 21, the only fintech in today's race, and Tony Durbin is back in car number 33. He's on the inside of row 4 in that 33 car. Alina Vario, a shock qualifier, is on the outside of row 3, and the slowest car in pole qualifying session that made the field, Matthias Taub in car number 10. Melanie Cleveno lines up on the outside of row 2, in car number 74, and Leonid Roderick on her inside 
in the Flash Racing Launch Energy car number four. The outside of the front row, Packer Carroll, the third of the three Volpes in today's race, the Maya Soft car, and on the pole for today's race, taking out the Delano Pole Award, the championship leader, Arto Kakinen, car number nine, the Gessler. Kakinen was very quick in all the practice sessions, and I wouldn't be surprised if he took his fourth win of the year today. There you see all the list of people who uh, didn't qualify or pre-qualify. It's a fairly long list. A lot of drivers you may not recognize because this may be their first attempt or may just be uh, only attempting this race and you uh, won't see much of them uh, in the, for the rest of the year until Decatur, that is. Anyway, Kekkonen, car number nine, brings the field around the final corner for the flying start. And here we go. We're underway at Indianapolis. Arto Kekkonen, car nine, leads the field down. And Packer Carroll on his outside. Roderick and Cleveno. Everyone looks like everything's pretty orderly. Tao got a great start in car number 10. I don't think Vario got a good start in the 59 car. And anyway, here comes Kakin in car number 9 as he sweeps across Carroll in the, into the lead. Roderick challenging him in car number 4. Uh, looking further back, looks like everyone has uh, gotten a pretty good start. Uh, we don't have any major collisions, but that 59 car is falling backwards. I uh, can't say I'm surprised. Alina Vario was... Uh, has not uh, really started a noble race on a super speedway before. In fact, she only did a couple late model races and uh, just to prepare for this event. So, um, uh, no experience there for Vario as Leonid Roderick moves into the lead of the race in car number four. Very sketchy moment as some people are trying to dodge that 59 car, but uh, Vario did a good job qualifying it. Tony Durbin, car number 33, on his way to the front. This is his first start of the year. In fact, his only scheduled appearance. Oh, he might be at Decatur, but he's not sure of that yet. Tony Durbin's been running in the ASCC, and uh, he hasn't been doing as well as he would expect over there. I think he's enjoying the opportunity to race against the more competitive field. Andrea Canassa in the 426 Motorsports car has unfortunately lost the pack already. Uh, clearly this car is as slow as it is hideous. 426 Motorsports not legendary for putting nice liveries on cars. Reese Bien's first start in the Terminator. Uh, the 984 car, it's a gray car right there. Uh, Terminator supposedly has a deal to work with uh, FPO for next season of full time, but um, if that deal falls through with FPO, I don't think they'll find a spot anywhere with anyone else because I haven't heard too many people talking about this car. That's a shame, really. It's a nice looking car, and uh, they tried to force Reese Bien and Marcus Leonard, but uh, I don't think they realize you just don't force things on Marcus Leonard like that. He has uh, way too many uh, alternatives. Here is Bill Calhoun in car number 38. Uh, he's um, having, a, having a pretty good start, I'd say, in that car. He's not really going backwards, which, uh, well, he won the Texas 500 earlier in the year, so he's uh, clearly picking up his game here. He's up here in the big leagues now. Adrian Devereaux on the move in car number one, the, the uh, man who led the championship for most of the season. Uh, Devereaux clearly uh, looking to win this race. If he does so, it'll be the first time since 2000, uh, 2006 that someone has won more than three races in a season. Dale Roswell in, is running back in 27th place, and as you can see here, the midfield is getting a little bit strung out. Uh, looks like some of these people are just going to save their tires and wait to see what they can do to the cars on the first pit stop. Zelda Ashby in car number 55. Running, uh, whoa, whoa, contact the Colada. Oh, Ashby goes around. Oh, look out, look out. Oh, Gaspar de Souza almost got wiped out by Ashby, who got turned by Ali Colada in the Volpe. Now, I'm sure that was uncalled for. Now, here's Dale Roswell coming back to the yellow. And Greg, whoa, whoa, Greg Woodard, what was that? Woodard just moved over on Roswell, just threw the 22 car into the wall, took Bill Calhoun and uh, Ben Atkins and one of the Atlantic cars into the wall. That was a little uncalled for. Not sure why Woodard felt uh, so inclined to do that, but anyway, Packer Carroll led on the restart as uh, several cars opted to make some adjustments to their cars. Yuho Cavela in, uh, in second place is really impressing. He uh, impressed at Cariola with his car control. The 25-year-old has been around Flash Racing for a while, but he doesn't really have a regular ride anywhere. He's uh, going to run in t the uh, TM Europe season finale with uh, the same car that he ran uh, at Cariola last year. Uh, Kivela has uh, been running mostly in Rallycross and uh, rallying in uh, Scandinavia, so he's not really a, a well-known name at all, but he's uh, picked up this oval racing stuff uh, fairly quickly, it looks like. Connor Row 4, keep an eye out for him. Brian Sendak was quickest in final practice, but uh, he has a puncture and bails for the pit lane from 15th place. Uh, rather unfortunate for him. Arto Kakinen, his teammate in the meantime, takes over the lead of the race, and as you probably noticed, uh, 
If you ever have uh, problems distinguishing Kekkonen's car from Sendak's car, just look for the red number on the roof for Kekkonen's car and Sendak's car. It's black, the uh, 90 car. But Arto Kekkonen takes over the lead uh, from his countrymen, and he looks like he has an intent on leading as much of this race as he can. Marcus Leonard on the move in the Xenos. This is not really a track we expected Xenos to perform at or even qualify for. But uh, Leonard has turned it up in the race. He wasn't as quick as he, I think he should have been in uh, all the practice sessions. But uh, looks like he's uh, performing when it counts. And uh, that's what I think matters the most. Pat Eicholtz in the 60 cars run here for the 500 several times. And now he runs here in a Master Cup car. He nearly won this race about 10 years ago and was on the front row, as I mentioned a few times. He's running in 31st place. He's not exactly having an ideal run here, but he is running the Eicholtz chassis, which has made a return to Master Cup competition, as I failed to mention in the starting grid piece. But here is that uh, the Eicholtz car running towards the back end. Greg Woodard gets into Wow, Greg Woodard is on a rampage today because Pat Eichel just got turned, and Woodard takes himself. That's Pawson in the Majestic car that's gone into the wall as well. So um, clearly... Uh, Greg Woodard's just deciding to make as many enemies as he can today because he just hooked the back of the 60 car, turned him around, and uh, then kind of just instant karma right there because uh, when the 60 car came flying across the track, took Woodard into the wall in the 40... Whoa! Whoa! What was that? Bill Calhoun, the 38 car, just comes flying into this mess, going way, way too fast, hits, up, hits the brakes on the very last second, and just piles into the back of poor Mika Pasanen. When the caution light is on, slow down, don't join the caution, and uh, maybe you'll get your car back to the pits, and then maybe you'll still be in the race. Uh, that's a novel concept, isn't it? As you can see, uh, the stewards wanted to have a, a little bit of a chat with a couple of different people, Ali Collada as well, in the 28 car, because she kind of came flying through there like a, a maniac as well. But as you can see, Kevin Dwyer, more importantly, is going for the lead of the race in the 72 car. The Royal Blue 72 is marching towards the front. You can tell this car apart from Tony Durbin's because Durbin's car has a lot more blue on it than Dwyer's does. But Kevin Dwyer, the number 72 that his father made famous by winning six Master Cups, he's moving into the lead of the race. Here comes Alan Hodges, though, on the inside. Oh, don't, look out, look out, look out. Oh, Kevin Dwyer playing it very, very courteous there with Hodges. Could have squeezed him down a little bit more than he, uh, more than he did. Hodges files back in line behind the Sar Eagle. It's really been a rough season for Dwyer, but he's holding on there in the lead of the race. There is uh, Kevin Dwyer. Seems to like using a bit of a higher line to get more momentum coming off the corners, but uh, Alan Hodges is uh, clearly going to do something about that as the 13 car makes move on the inside of Kevin Dwyer. The EFR boys are on the move, as you can see in this picture. Scott Bates is legendary for his prowess on tracks like this. Uh, he's visited Victory Lane on super speedways uh, more often than I, th I think just uh, most other drivers in the field. I would keep an eye on this car and that bright orange and black car, Ian Cooper, the Lysander car. And uh, as I mentioned in the pre-race piece, uh, it's a one-year anniversary of Lycoya's entry into the TM Master Cup Series. There's a couple of those cars in the race. Greg Woodard in the 41, Archer Harris in the 79. And uh, their lead man, Woodard, is not exactly having uh, an ideal day right now. He's uh, been in several incidents and he's going to be visiting the stewards. Both of the Atlantic cars are running outside the top 30. Ben Atkins ran into trouble earlier and Carl Rosinski just seems awfully timid on the racetrack in that 330 car. Uh, not a whole lot of confidence there with the, in the uh, Rosinski uh, pits anyway. But uh, to be fair, they're not causing as much chaos as other people have been. Anthony Griffith in the uh, 77 car has been working his way through the field along with that zero car of Gaspar Souza. Looks like they're kind of waiting a little bit. I have a feeling Anthony Griffith will be taking over the 29 car for James Dalton Racing for the next uh, two races in Australia. Here's Matthias Taub in car number 10 as he has just lost the lead to Luciano Savaral in car number 3. Uh, those uh, Colt Morel Altairs are definitely going to be uh, cars to watch. And so is this 10 car, Matthias Taub. He's been pretty quick as well when he hasn't been uh, causing accidents all throughout the season. But uh, Taub is going to suddenly have problems, and Matthias Taub goes out of the race after uh, a very promising start to the event. Matthias Taub, car number 10, pulls it onto the apron. He lost the lead, and then apparently the car just was losing power, so uh, it's run rather unfortunate. Matthias Taub drops out of the race, and no points for Taub today. In car number 10, the Swedish driver has uh, won a race in his home country earlier in the year. And here is lap 44, Carlos Donzello in the 21 car is kicking off green flag pit stops. Um, Yamino Tenshi in the 25 car is also coming in, along with some of the tail enders. 
Lap 45, most of the leaders are in. We're watching Adrian Devereaux in car number one. He is going to be the, uh, among the leaders that pit. Melanie Cleveno in. Looks like Kinasa is just leaving the pits. There's Alan Hodges in the background coming in. Those are some of the cars that were taken by surprise when Taub's car uh, suddenly lost power. And then on lap 46, everyone else pits. Right when pit stop cycled out, we had a debris caution on lap 50, and that put Kevin Dwyer at the head of the class. Dwyer still leads in Indianapolis as they lead into coming into turn one. The 90 car Sendak is still one lap down. Arto Kakinen trying to have a run on his teammate, and he's getting bogged up behind Yulian Asova, it looks like. But Kevin Dwyer is now being allowed to stretch his lead. Yamino Tenshi is out with engine failure. That's a big, big engine failure on that car. That's a rather large smoke cloud trailing from that car. That's rather unfortunate because Tenshi was having a pretty good run in this car. So uh, the uh, rather popular Japanese driver who uh, is now out of the race. Hodges Walter Racing drivers Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarola are going to the front. And that is Melanie Cleveno who has never uh, run in a super speedway before in that 74 car contending as well. Leonid Roderick and Alan Hodges are just apparently cruising for the time being. They're not really pushing it as hard as I think they could. These are two veteran drivers, so uh, clearly I think they're just w waiting to see how the rest of this race plays out. Michael Sykes, Roderick's teammate, one of his two teammates, has a puncture, and he's going to pull that car into the pits. That's rather unfortunate for Sykes. He, he was having a very strong run in this 44 car uh, right up until bad luck struck. Anyway... Both the Saar Eagles are out in front of the race. Kevin Dwyer in the 72, Tony Durbin in the 33. Dwyer leading the race in this 72 car. Tony Durbin is going to take the lead from him on the inside. Tony Durbin from Texas, Kevin Dwyer of Minnesota. It's, oh, wait a minute. I see something going wrong there. Is Kevin Dwyer in trouble? Yes, he is. The 72 car is slowing. And Kevin Dwyer pulls it out on the axis road. And that looks like a terminal problem to me. Kevin Dwyer leads the race and then goes out of the race. This is just the usual Kevin Dwyer luck as he goes out. Rather unfortunate because uh, this seems to be a recurring theme for him this season. A huge disappointment for him. He could have easily won this race, I believe. Archer Harris in the uh, number 79 car is uh, doing what Greg Wooder isn't doing, and that's having a clean, solid run. Harris runs in 13th. That's his first Master Cup start. He's running in TM Lights, and he's doing very well in TM Lights, I might add. Uh... Archer Harris, like his teammate Greg Woodard, pretty nice guy, but uh, just not a whole lot of experience on his part. Harris in this uh, 79 car, definitely turning some heads at the moment. Uh, we'll have to see if he gets a full-time shot next season, especially if this uh, performance keeps up. Tony Durbin in car number 33, fe uh, feels like he has a tire going down on that car, and he peels off into the pits. Uh, however, uh, Durbin is pitting close enough to green flag pit stops that this might not hurt him as much as it might if uh, he if the tire went down when uh, Michael Sykes had his trouble, for instance. I have a I have a feeling we're gonna have to keep an eye on what happens to Tony Durbin throughout the rest of the day because that 33 car is definitely fast. Here's another car that's definitely fast. That's Frank Azure, car 460. He's attempted a, several of the special events before, but he's never qualified. Uh, this 460 FAC Motorsports car is clearly fast. He's running in 17th, and uh, this car is just seeming to be getting better and better as the race goes on. Packer Carroll is hounding him in that two car, and I don't think Packer is expecting to be racing with him for position. Battle of the Finns up front again. We have uh, Yuho Cavale in the 04, Arto Kakinen in the 9. As you see, everyone else looks like they're pretty strung out, just waiting for pit stops, I think. Cavela, the 04 car, uh, he, made a, he made a bit of an art of power sliding around Cariala, and it cost him eventually. Uh, whoever wins this race, though, I think is going to have to beat these two cars, Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol. They eventually caught uh, the two Finns and got around them. The two uh, lead Hodges Walter cars have uh, really been sort of the class of the field uh, for most of this season. Arto Kakinen and Leonid Roderick are really the only cars that have been able to mount the a uh, consistent challenge to them. Devereaux and Salvarol are two of the best drivers in the field, so it's not really a surprise that they run as well as they do. Green flag pit stops begin again on lap 71. Chris Johans leads this group into the pits. Adrian Devereaux and the rest of the leaders are coming in on lap 72. Devereaux is playing games with everybody. Look at that. He just got, he just moved Salvarol down, and Salvarol had to get off the gas to not uh, cause a collision there. Stacked up the whole field coming into the pits there. Advantage Devereaux. I don't know how he got away with that. 
Ali Kalata in car number 28 has had a pretty miserable day in the third Volpe. And as you can see, that's come to an end. There's smoke billing out the back of that car. Kalata's day is done. We'll probably see her back at Decatur in that car. Brian Sendak in car number 90 uh, is going out as well he, on lap number 80. However, uh, Sendak's had a pretty miserable day, and I'd have to say that uh, it's mercifully over. Uh, it's very disappointing for him. Scott Bates is on the move in the 88 car. The top four cars in the race are actually championship contenders, although Bates' title challenge, I think, is going to revolve on someone else having some trouble. He's uh, going to really need to pick it up if he's going to uh, take home his first Master Cup championship. Hard to believe he doesn't have one yet, but uh, that 88 car uh, certainly is a contender. Davina Henson in car number six is going a lap down in the Volpe. Uh, looks like all three of the Volpes have had a kind of a struggle today. Henson in the six car has not fared much better than Ali Collada, and uh, Packer Carroll has kind of slid backwards in uh, car number two. But Henson, uh, Henson in trouble now as Henson has gone out. Another big cloud coming out of the back of that Volpe, and uh, well, I wonder which of the uh, Volpe Engineers is going to be getting an ear lashing for uh, for this one because that's two cars out and apparently with the same problem. Bob Steffens is impressing in this 70 car for Team Thunder. He's in the top 10. That is, I believe, the same engines that Power Steering Incorporated has in the Tenaires. So, uh, we'll have to see uh, how PSI reacts to Team Thunder doing this well. Alan Hyde is in trouble in car number 13 on lap 92. This is right when the leaders were all about to come in for a final green flag pit stop. And Alan Hodges just had an engine go at the absolute worst time because he stacked them all up there, as you see. Adrian Devereaux, Luciano Savarol, and Narto Kekin were able to get in the pits cleanly. Ten laps to go. Scott Bates in car number 88 is encountering some trouble as the film, as you can see, is encountering some difficulties here. Uh, but car number 88 is uh, out of the race and uh, it's rather unfortunate because he was having a very, very good run in that car. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, is still in the lead of the race. Luciano Savarol is second. And that is Marcus Leonard back there in third in uh, the triple nine car. Here's Bob Steffens in car number 70, continuing his good run in that car. Archer Harris is uh, not on the lead lap. Arto Kekkonen in the nine car is. So uh, Steffens is going to have to uh, really pick it up if he's going to hold off Kekkonen. Here is Chris Johans in the 64. He's running in fourth place. Where's he been all day? We haven't seen Johans much at the front of the field, but it looks like the, uh, the Mitchell and Sons team has really given him good pit work. If anything goes wrong at the front, he'll be there. And now, this is what I call a recovery drive. This is why Tony Durbin's a former Master Cup champion. He's in eighth place after all of his mishaps uh, today. He's up back in the top ten solidly. Frank Escher in the 460 car apparently rolled the dice and went with two tires, but I think that's going to cost him. He's running in ninth, but he's being caught by everyone behind him rather quickly in that car. Dale Roswell in the car number 22, has that, uh, the car has a problem right as the leaders caught him. Talk about bad timing in car number 22. So Dale Roswell goes out of the race, and uh, it's rather unfortunate because Roswell was having a uh, pretty strong uh, was having a, a pretty strong run in the early stage of this race. Yulian Asova in car number 8 is running in 10th place. It's Melanie Cleveno right behind her, challenging her for 10th. Nasova in car number 8. Oh, I see smoke coming out of the back of that car. Nasova's done. Nasova is definitely out of this one. I saw black smoke coming out of that car. Yulian Asova, heartbreaking, is out of this race from 10th place about 30 seconds after Dale Roswell lost the engine in that car. Now, here's Archer Harris in the 79 car. He and Michael Sykes are battling for 26th place in among some of the top 10 runners. So, clearly, some of the lap cars uh, kind of forgot what courtesy was today, especially at the end of the race. So, I don't think he's going to be earning himself too many fans here. Leon Marcus Leonard is uh, stuck in traffic, as you can see back there. The Hot as Walter boys are going to battle for the win amongst themselves, it looks like, unless Leonard can really get through this traffic quickly and mount a charge on him. Brandon LaRoe is running in 15th place, Zach Duff in 16th. Pretty quiet days for both of these guys, and I think they're both earning a lot of respect out there today. LaRoe in that 24 car doesn't really have the experience that Duff does in the 5, but as you can see, they're both making a very respectable run today. As is Anthony Griffith in the 77 car, running back in 18th, Reese Bian in 19th, and uh, Carla Rosinski in 20th. By the way, Alina Vario in the 59 car is in 17th, so some good runs here for the underdogs. Luciano Savarol and Adrian Devereaux are now going to take the white flag. Savarol, car number three, leads this race, and he could take his third one of the year. Devereaux, car number one, looking for his fourth. 
Did Devereaux just make his move too early? Devereaux it just took a peek under Savarol. Was that too early? Because Savarol, he was not close enough to the three car to make a pass. Did Devereaux just blow his only shot at winning this race? They come down the back straightaway for the final time today. I think Devereaux just might it might not be close enough. They come into three. Savarol again taking a very wide uh, entry into the corner in order to carry some more speed through there. But Devereaux looks like he's got a shot. Savarol gives him room. Devereaux coming in on the inside in car number one. It's going to be a drag race to the finish. Savarol gets a better run coming off, I think. But it, they're side by side coming down the, to the finish line. And Adrian Devereaux's got it. Adrian Devereaux, car number one in a thrilling finish to take his fourth win of the year. A feat that has not been done since 2006. Two one hundredths of a second was the gap at the finish. Luciano Savarol led 27 laps. He takes the lap leader bonus today. And with double points coming into effect, that's 110 points for Savarol. Best finish for Zenos all year long with Marcus Leonard taking his first podium of the season. Chris Johans a solid fourth. Yuho Cavela, Tony Durbin fifth and sixth. Ian Cooper, car number triple seven. We didn't really see enough of him today, I don't think. He wasn't really as much of a factor as I expected. Arto Kakin in that nine car just really lost it on that final pit stop. Bob Steffens and Melanie Cleveno round out the top ten. Big round of applause to Bob Steffens and to Melanie Cleveno. I don't think too many people predicted either of those cars would finish in the top ten. Leonid Roderick, Packer Carroll, Frank Azure, a great debut in the uh, number four, uh, 460 car. The FAC Motorsports team can really pat themselves on the back. They had an error-free day. Jose Luis Martinez, we really didn't mention him at all. He had a pretty quiet run today. So did Brandon LaRoe and Zach Duff. Elena Vario in the 59 car uh, bags a solid result as well. Anthony Griffith in the 77 car. Reese Bian in the Terminator brings home some points on debut for that car and for that team. And Carla Rosinski in car number 330 for Atlantic Motorsports takes home the final points paying position. Ben Atkins came home in 21st and Gaspar D'Souza in car number 0 was running in 22nd at the, at the time the flag fell. I'm a little disappointed that D'Souza wasn't able to get up there at the finish in that zero car. And that's everyone that finished on the lead lap. And now let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship leaving Indianapolis. Devereaux is back in the championship lead. Luciano Savarol second, Arto Kekin third. Leonid Roderick is fourth, but I would like to remind everyone that Roderick didn't start Michigan and that he will be starting at New York. So he has a pretty good shot of whittling away a good portion of that gap between uh, himself and the top three. I would say that it's pretty much a four-horse race at this point, but Scott Bates and Chris Johans have been really charging lately, Johans in particular in that 64 car. Packer Carroll is in, is now up to seventh, Kingston down a few positions, Michael Sayed, Julian Asova as well. Marcus Leonard jumps all the way up to 12th with, his, uh, with that podium result. Great job by Zenos to get him up there, we'll see if he can continue that challenge. Thias Taub, Jose Luis Martinez, Davina Henton had a pretty miserable day, Ian Cooper jumps up a a spot in the championship. Scott Stoidler still in free fall. Dale Roswell down a few. Nick Apostinen's just hanging out of the top 20 as well as Yamino Tenchi. Zach Duff is beginning to really nibble on Tenchi's heels for that 20th spot in the championship. No independence trophy points were awarded for this race. However, there will be independence points awarded for the next race, the first of the two Australian races on the calendar.